Hi. Now you should be able to hear me. I'm hoping you can hear me because I thought that nobody was hearing me, but okay. Uh, it tells me that I'm live. Uh, let me know now if you can hear me because I noticed that the microphone wasn't moving until now. And now I'm noticing that it's moving. So hello Marlena, hello everybody. Let me know if you can hear me now. Yeah, it should it should uh, work in theory, but uh, you know, if you're seeing what I'm doing here, it's my mouse <laughs> to this side of the world. Okay, yeah, okay, we hear you now. Okay, that's that's good. That's good because I was I was starting to get worried. So hi everyone, uh, this is Claudia. This is uh, another live stream on a Sunday evening. It is evening for me. I mean, um, it's seven o'clock in the evening. Uh, don't know where you are all at, uh, and if it's still seven or not, I uh, have no idea, but anyway, hi. <laughs> so the title is a bit misleading, right? Because you're thinking, I'm seeing this picture, Claudia, and I'm looking at the title and it says punies and, and eucalyptus. And I might think, where are the peonies? Because these definitely are not peonies. I don't know what they are, but they're not <laughs> peonies. Uh, these are quite exotic flowers. Uh, I forgot the name, actually. But uh, the peonies that I was talking about are these ones. So I made the mini moon, actually. I don't know what came over me. I just wanted to make some kind of peony buds kind of thing. Like, not, not opened up peonies, but just like where it starts. Oh my goodness, there's a dude with a very... With a very broken car. You know those broken cars where... <laughs> You know, you should look up uh, for your exhaust, but you don't. Then it just like sounds like crazy. Yeah, that that type of dude was driving around. I'm looking outside to see if I can spot him. They're very annoying people. Okay, anyway, so if you're wondering where are the peonies, they're on the other drawing. <laughs> we'll just do this one first and then uh, maybe we'll uh, sit around and we'll do the second, okay? Just so that uh, we have some fun. Um, and... I just wanted to do this this painting and have it nice and you know um, test some colors. I want some reds with some yellows on this one and then some blues and some purples and then this one is going to be very delicate and then the flowers are going to be nice with purple and yellow and then some nice greens everywhere. Uh, we're just going to see. Okay. Uh, maybe I want too much but nah it's okay. It's going to do. The statements I'm going to try to go around them but most probably maybe I'll just do them with some fine tech either gold paint or something because yeah those it's always very difficult so I have my big set here uh, this is my big set of watercolors there's a lot of Daniel Smith there's a lot of Schminke so it's kind of a combination of Schminke and Daniel Smith one or two Windsor and Newton but majority of them uh, are the Daniel Smith and the Schwinkets, okay? Uh, so I'm just showing you so you know what I'm what I'm using. And then I have another set uh, which is mainly Schminke, uh, which are the super granulating ones and I'm gonna use them a little bit like the blues and uh, this one's the Galaxy Black. And uh, we're just gonna go go ahead, okay? So I'm gonna open up my uh, my things. But anyway, hi everybody. Now that we got that out of the way, right uh we can start we can start our live stream and you know our live story you know all the stuff uh i'm using number four from escoda and i'm gonna use maybe the number five from gerstacker we'll see which one i need uh i am planning so we're gonna go on a small vacation um next week and I'm going to go to Rotterdam and in Rotterdam they have the Gerstaker um, art store and that's where I'm going to go and I'm going to kind of buy a lot of a lot of the stuff that that I am without so watercolors I have plenty so I'm, I'm not sure if watercolors is something that I will buy uh, unless I see a color that I really want right but I doubt it. Um, what I will buy is I will replenish my brushes because the Escoda brushes, although very 
nice and cheap and very good they kind of fray in about a year so i need to replenish that notice that uh it's very weird saying with a full with a full background of <laughs> of arches so other color paper but i finished another block of arches so um maybe i'll just buy some more paper um, and I need lots of micron pens because for some reason I don't have enough micron pens. At least not the correct size for this kind of paper. This being rougher paper, like cold press, I really need, um, yeah, a little bit, let's say, different, different, like from number five up, from um, micron pen number five. Normally, when you doodle or when you do, you can use the number one, number three. They're really nice, but on cold press, it's really hard to do, uh, to to do that. And um, yeah, that's why I'm uh, uh, I'm going there. And of course, it's also my vacation, and I haven't been in an art store in like forever. So yeah, it's gonna be all fun for me at least. Don't know for the rest of the people. Um, although it's a bit scary right now because we booked our vacation more than a week ago. But since that week, we've seen like the numbers increase in Holland like uh, by 1000%, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> now we're like at 10,000 cases. That was just like an exponential increase for some reason. It was really bad. <laughs> so... Uh, and I'm using New Gamboche now as the yellow, by the way. New Gamboche looks a little bit like Nicolazzo yellow. Um, just, it's the one that I have the closest. So I'm just going to add it to the corners here and blend it out. Okay. So we're just going to go there, but we're not going to interact with anybody. We're just going to go, you know, walk in the city, do stuff go to the art store and then go back so not a normal what you would call a normal holiday or anything but um, yeah I really need it I really need to get out of the house the problem is usually you are in the house and usually um, you go to work, right? That's what you usually do. You go to work, you get out of the house. So, you know, you can you can kind of live without a holiday or without being outside of the, the house. But now we haven't left the house in so long and I'm also working here day in, day out that I feel like even it's not going to be just a holiday. It's just going to be, you know, stepping out of the house. That's the most important thing that I'm I'm considering so it's not going to be for long, just a few days, but yeah, it's uh, really something that I believe is needed. And uh, yeah, me and my husband are going to have some fun. So uh, that's where I'm going to replenish some of my art supplies. Uh, and maybe I'll see if there's anything new. I mean, I haven't been in an art supply store. The funny part is when you're online and you're searching online for stuff, right? And you're searching for buying. I don't actually go and check out if I see any new supplies or if I see any um, something new come out. Like usually I got that one when I was going to, to the shops and you would see something new, a new supply and you want to try it. But now that you order online at least that's how it is for me i'm much more focused i'm like i know what i want to order you know i'll just order that thing and then that's it so i'm uh, yeah i'm looking forward to discover something new i have no idea what i will discover but they have this very big store in rotterdam so i'm hoping that I can find maybe some new Japanese supplies or some calligraphy supplies or something fun, you know. That will be that will be ideal. And um, don't know about you guys, but yeah, that's what I want to do. Uh, what happened since the last time we spoke? Yesterday we worked a lot, actually. Not walked, but worked. It's weird. 
I'm, I, I heard myself talking. Uh, we actually drilled a lot in the house yesterday uh, because we had um, we had some new uh, TV mounted TV stands for the TV um, because it used to be on a table and that table really old, not really holding the TV that much. So we just mounted it to the wall and then we decided to do some more. I had um, here in my cross room, I have all these IKEA pegboards in front of me. You guys probably never saw what my craft room looks like, but I have a desk basically, which is basically it's a desk made by me. I, I just bought planks. There are two planks, different colors and some legs and I made the tables and then um, in front, there are pegboards and then the shelves up. Um, so that's how it looks like. Um, and I actually had um, two extra pegboards that I wanted to do because I had an unused space at the end. So I bought these IKEA pegboards that are the tinier version. Um, and that's what we had to drill. So I drilled one here in front of me, created a lot more space to put some more papers. And then one uh, right next to me, next to the window, where I actually they did a pegboard where I am pinning uh, all the illustration I'm actually buying from other artists. Um, and I'm making kind of a mood board slash inspiration board kind of thing. Um, really loving it so far. It's really nice. So this is what we did. And then we had some cat stuff. I don't know um, if you are familiar with my cats they are named Hap and Dit and um, they're quite fun cats I would say um, and we bought at the sale it was at the sale um, this kind of shelves where they can sit uh, that you can just drill into the wall and it's like round and it has a pillow and they can sit above because my cats really liked to sit above and to watch everything that's happening. It's I think they feel safer when they're like that. Um, just assuming now that that's why they like it. So we drilled that one, those ones to walls. One of my cats actually sleeping right now. She loves it. She loves it. Uh, she's obsessed with it. Anyway, so yesterday we did a lot of dreaming and also. We had these mounts for the monitors, so the, the PC monitors, and especially for my husband, um, we never got around to actually putting that one on the wall. He had the mount for a while, but um, they were literally like this big, like things that needed to go into the wall. <laughs> they were like really big, um, how do you call bolts? And uh, we needed a special drill for it because they're so big. Like, you can't just say, I drill with a normal drill. No, it's concrete, right? So you have a um, hammer drill kind of thing. So, yeah, the now that we, you know, we got it out uh, and we got our hands on the hammer drill, we decided, okay, we're going to drill everything. So basically, this is what we did yesterday. Pretty busy day. Drilling is actually quite... Right. I think it's not the drilling itself because that wasn't that bad but measuring everything so everything is centered and measuring so that you know the next pegboard fits exactly how it should be and doing all sorts of math calculations that's the one that took forever yesterday so yeah we were pretty um, tired afterwards let's put it this way um but now I'm so happy because now everything looks much clearer. Actually, I can put everything now on the pegboard. So I don't have anything on my desk other than the watercolors when I take them out uh, to use them. Uh, which is really nice. So I can have my, my desk clear, everything clear. Um, so yeah, this has been a lot of work that we've put in. Let's use it this way. Right. Um, I'm gonna do one of them with Moon Glow. Moon Glow is from Daniel Speed. It's a really nice blue. Don't get me started. Uh oh. You see the brush is a bit 
dissolving. <laughs> I'm gonna do this one with Moon Glow. It's a really nice blue. And I'm gonna couple it with some purple. Um, what else did we do? Yeah, we um, we made some appointments for next week because my glasses um, are for a little bit longer than three years, I guess. I don't know where you are at, if you change your glasses very often or not, but in here you get the prescri prescription and it's a bit tied to your insurance so the insurance kind of pays out i mean you can always buy a new pair of glasses that's not forbidden on anything um you can always buy a new pair uh but if you want the insurance to pay for a majority of it on on the glasses on the prescription i think they give you like 300 euros towards your glasses every three years so now our three years is basically over so uh we were notified that we can go and buy a new pair which is really nice because um yeah i want a new pair and i wanna wanna go in and visit but the point is that you can only go there with an appointment because you know they need to take care of of you and to make it safe because there's also the op Optometrist, optometrist is it called? The guy that measures your eyes. Because I'm pretty sure every time I went there, my eye pres prescription changed. Um, I'm not so sure that nowadays it changes because um, I don't feel like I don't see with my glasses anymore. So previously, my prescription always was changing. And it was sometimes getting so bad that I wasn't seeing with my glasses, you know. And then I was going to change my prescription. Um, I don't think it's the case right now. So it might be that I just need to change my glasses itself. Um, one of the reasons why you would change your glasses is because the, the handles kind of get a bit loose after three years. And then my glass start to fall down my nose or something like that. So we've decided to do that next week. Uh, because anyway... No matter what you do and what you try, um, usually glasses take about a week till they make them anyway. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, what else did we, did we have fun with? Um, as you guys might know or might not know, Right, I used to play a lot of World of Warcraft in the past, um, and that's where I actually met my husband, which is very funny. Um, but nowadays we haven't. I mean, I haven't really played it. I don't really get the time anymore. I have so much stuff to do, and also the channel that I don't really get time to play anymore. But the funny part is I keep watching others play it online while I do my art or my my stuff, <laughs> which is quite funny. It's like why would you why would you do that? <laughs> um, and I notice a lot of people are playing these new games, Final Fantasy, and I was wondering if you guys have tried it or have you seen it? Because it looked quite nice. And by the way, when I'm playing again, the funniest part is that I'm not necessarily playing the game just because I like playing the game. I like to watch the art, art in, within the game. So when I was playing World of Warcraft, I really liked to go into these areas that they had like caves and mushrooms and all this stuff and try to get inspired. Um, this was just what I was doing <laughs> wasn't um, um, this is going like this and it's going to be more blue um, let me decide what blue I should use because that's more purplish maybe I'll try the dark blue 
or maybe one of these blue wait we have this blue which is a thunder blue and maybe i want a super granulating blue for the other flower there okay, let's try it yeah so i was planning on trying to look up the final fantasy just because i saw that the character and you know especially like uh, um landscapes they looked really nice so i was like thinking hmm, i can actually uh, learn a thing of two uh, in the past i would have loved to work for a game and to do character design or whatever you know it was uh Nowadays, after all the stories of workers being mistreated and so on, I'm not sure I would want to work. I prefer working for myself, to be honest, because at least I know I will treat myself good. <laughs> and I don't have to, you know, get treated by randomly by some other people. I don't know what you guys think, but I find it's a little bit troublesome. The, the way they do the gaming anyway that was the reason why I was interested in Final Fantasy actually I found a funny a uh, really funny game that I want to get back into it's called Townscaper and it's on Steam don't think that I'm doing any sorts of anything um, you can build cities with it and the cities and the, the houses and you can do like city architecture and you can build your own cities because I always have trouble. I want to I wanna draw like buildings and, and things like that and I always have this trouble that I don't find really good um, inspiration for those cities nowadays look horrible. You know, I want more of a medieval vibe of a city, you know, for, for what I draw, I don't want to draw modern cities or stuff like that, so, um, yeah, that's another game, and you, you notice that I'm, if I am going to play games, I'm going to play it because, you know, it actually gives me something like <laughs> inspiration for things, so, yeah, I really like to do that. Da -da 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 -da. I'm gonna use a darker blue later on. Uh, this is just the first layer. I'm not worried too much. Okay. And that's kind of it. Oh yeah, I got my... Well, my second order ever on my Etsy shop. For those who don't know, I have an Etsy shop and I ordered it. And I got the order from Canada actually. Which is very funny. Some prints and some stickers. Um, and I just made the box today. And this was the funniest thing that I, f I found. Um, you know, the order was placed technically yesterday. But it was night for me when I'm sleeping, right? Um, and then I get a weird message from um, Etsy saying, uh, Why are you delaying with your shipping? I, I always say I'm shipping within three business days, right? But remember, today is Sunday. There's no... There's no post office on Sunday that I can't go to the post office and and do the package, right? Um, it, it's not like that. It doesn't work like that. And then you get asked these questions and like it is like freaking out. Like, why didn't you send the package yet? And I'm like, and then they put the question like, are you waiting for something to send the package? And I'm like, yes, I'm waiting for something. And then you get this drop down. <laughs> Which is like so incredibly weird. And then you have all the possible reasons in the world. Except I'm waiting for the post office to open. Like reasons. I'm waiting for data from the customer. I'm waiting for the correct uh, address. Delivery address. I'm waiting for whatever. The only one that wasn't there is. I'm actually waiting for the post office to open. Which is maybe one of the most important ones. I don't know about you but. I find that one very important. Yeah. Anyway. So I made a package. The package is here. 
gonna go to the post office tomorrow to do, to send send it. But I am so happy. I mean, and the funny part is like uh, she bought two of the prints, two of the same, so she could give one to um, a friend of her and one for her. And luckily, I actually also just printed two. I mean, I print my prints because they're glissé prints like they're really archival museum quality prints i print them at uh this dude this dude is in my city he has this very big like epson printers um like if you want to make it into the printing business of course you can print them at home on cheaper paper and lesser quality with just a normal printer right like you buy pay um this guy has a printer. Let me explain. How should I explain? Um, this dude has a printer that is in the, you know, cost from 8K up. <laughs> and, and like, for example, I have a magnifying glass here. And I always look for when I'm printing something with a magnifying glass to see, you know, what the quality is. And the quality sits in the dots per inch. So how many dots you have per inch. So when you look at the normal printer, like I have my printer, it says 600 dpi. It should be technically okay, but it's not. It's not. When you look at the magnifying glass, you see that the printer doesn't really have... You can see the individual dots of ink that the printer let on the paper right so this kind of the quality of a normal paper um, and also to my normal printer I can't feed watercolor paper to it I tried trust me I tried I managed to block it for a while right so um, yeah that's not that's not something that um, I can fit very well. I will come with some white gel pen because I need to individually arrange these ones. But I'm gonna let it dry, and I'm going to do. I'm gonna do some more extra extras here. Extras, extras. Okay. So. Yeah. So I print them on this guy. But of course, this guy is just doing his own thing, and it takes about a week until he prints them right so it's not like I can an order comes and then I can always go to this guy and say print me something um, so I did order in advance from him um, but I only ordered about two two prints of each because they're quite expensive so that's how many I had on my stock for that particular print and uh, this uh, girl, she ordered uh, both of them, one for her and one for for a friend, which I'm really grateful because uh, it's really nice to know that somebody really appreciates your art and wants to share it with others. It's really nice. So I packaged everything also with some stickers and with some of the goodies. And then... We figured that actually the way we're sending, because I'm sending it as a letter, because come on, it's like 100 grams. Um, makes no point to send it in a, like a package, right? But if you send it as a letter, you don't get track and trace. And I really, really, really thought that I would get track and trace, to be honest. Apparently you don't. And then I just made an executive decision to se send it as priority signed. At least then I know that they're, you're paying a bit more, but I'm having a bit more confidence that they are taking care of it. Although I won't be able to track it, right? But at least I know that they are doing something. By the way, I'm, I'm doing the petals, the parts of the petals that are underneath, like these two will be on top, so I'm not going to touch them. But this one and this one, I'm going to do some more of the dark red. Okay. And by the way, I have the window open. And it's really nice outside. There's a smell coming. And let me explain about the smell. And I know you guys are going to be like, whoa, no, we don't want to hear. <laughs> no smell. <laughs> no worry. Um uh, it's not a problem. Um there's 
um, the trees are in bloom and there are some special trees, they're called linden trees um, or brasswood in uh, other countries but linden trees in general um, the Romanian world is uh, I believe tei and the smell I mean I couldn't I couldn't put my finger on what does this smell like all the trees are in bloom here and there's a reason why like this these flowers are the flowers the flowers of this tree are sometimes very potent. You make tea out of them. When I was young my mom used to make tea out of them. But the smell I was like I couldn't place it. I was like, yeah, I know it's linden tree flowers, but where what does it smell like? And I realized just today what it smells like. You know when you buy the incense sticks? Sometimes you have these incense incense sticks, like the Chinese incense sticks. It smells like that, you know, like, like some incense sticks. Which is a little bit like, ah, okay, now I get it. And now I realize that probably the those sticks were trying to kind of... Uh, imitate the smell of these trees now I understand but you know when you have incense sticks you sometimes get a little bit too overwhelmed with all of this so yeah this is what's happening right now it's pretty overwhelming the smell I would say not that I mind I actually like the smell but sometimes it's like mm, it's a bit too much makes me sneeze anyway because it's like the pollen season lasts forever in here okay okay and then let's do some different blue let's do some dark blue Okay, dark blue it is. Uh, that one, like I said, I'm going to do very delicate, so it's going to be with the graphite incense. Okay. We uh, we started watching Sweet Tooth. I don't know if you guys are watching Sweet Tooth. Um, yeah, Sweet Tooth is really nice. Um, I really like it. It shows like how humans work a little bit and and so on. I was laughing with my husband because, you know, looking how people reacted and still react to the current outbreak, it is very hard for me to believe that they would have reacted totally different to that the other type of upgrade uh, up, upgrade outbreak. Because, you know, oh, people are writing or whatever. And I'm like, hmm. Yeah, maybe some people will. But I don't think it's going to be that much widespread panic everywhere. I don't know where these people are getting it. Because I don't see widespread panicking. Like, if it would have been widespread panic, then people would have stayed home, to be honest. And we wouldn't have been in this situation that we are in now so i'm starting to laugh a little bit of these movies that are like oh uh end of the world movie or whatever um it's a bit unrealistic knowing that people don't really react like that like immediately there's there's always an outbreak there's always going to be you know medical people saying oh everybody should stay home and isolate and people actually doing that and i'm like yeah, that's not going to happen, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, got to be disappointed on that one. But anyway, the movie itself is nice. And it talks about some really deep sort of subjects. So, yeah, that's okay. Okay. Uh... So definitely need the nice gold to just uh, pop them up, okay? Uh, this one maybe I'll let white. 
right? Because the white looks nice against the red here. I think it really needs the gold. Okay, I'm gonna move to the last flowers and then we do the leaves. And the last flowers, I'm gonna do it with the graphite inset. You can see that it's very much loft and so on. Uh, so, we're gonna have, we're gonna have the port and with the yellow. I'm going to add the port around. That's a very nice pink purplish kind of thing. And I'm adding it around and then I'm going to come with water and drag it around. I saw um, somebody on Instagram today, I was watching them. They were doing this very tiny um, draw watercolor piece of a really nice fish. And they were using so tiny brushes and they had so much control over everything from the water. They were doing like this really nice gradient, which I was impressed by, to be honest. Um, and they were like using two brushes at once and so on. And I was like, hmm, man, I am not the most patient person in the world. I don't think I could... I could do that. I don't think I would have that patience. I mean, I have patience, but not as much as that girl had, right? To do a perfect gra gradient. That was like super perfect and super everything. But, surprise, surprise, we're also going to go to the Efteling. And then I've decided I'm going to vlog. And I'm decided that maybe I want to also do some painting. There, if it's nice weather or something, you know, I'm just going to vlog a bit and have some fun a bit. Because why not? It's the Efteling. It's really the Efteling. So, yeah. I know that they have lots of hydrangea flowers there. So I'm hoping I can see them in bloom and I can get inspired by the colors there. And um, by the way, I have no idea which set I should bring with me. I'm actually considered just bringing the this graphite in set because this has uh, almost all the colors I would need. It has really nice, well, maybe the super granulating ones also, but that's about it. I don't think I need to bring very big sets or anything. Um, because anyway, we're staying only for a day, so yeah, I'll consider it because I'm not sure if I sh should be doing that or I should just be vlogging. I also want to have fun there, so we'll just have to see. I'll have to decide what to do on the spot, so yeah, we'll have to see. Dun, dun, dun. But yeah, if there will be one set that I will bring with me, it will be the graffiti set because it has the most versatility out of all the sets. Okay. And they are open. It's like the summer after link. So when we're gonna go. Uh, it's gonna be open till 8 p.m. so that's gonna be nice um, usually if you go into the weekend they're open till 10 and that's when you can actually um, you know walk in the um, in the night and they you know they put all the all the lights on uh, I will make lots of pictures you can draw afterwards okay the decision has been made. <laughs> I will make pictures afterwards. I really want to get inspired because I really want to draw some stuff from the Symbolica and uh, from the flowers. It's really something I would like to get to do. Um, 
I feel like my I feel like I want to do kind of a wizardy theme soon. <sighs> kind of Halloweeny slash wizardy theme, and I'm feeling like I need my inspiration point to come. You know. So yeah. That would be nice. Maybe I'll do a collaboration with the Efteling. I get to draw some of their posters and then they sell it in. <laughs> I'm just dreaming here. They will never do that with me. <laughs> I doubt that. But I can try. I can say, hey, I'm your new, uh, new Anton Peake. And then they will laugh at me. They're like, yeah, right. Anton Peake was a genius that made the Efteling. You're definitely not at the level of genius, Claudia. I cannot decide whether those are... Okay, let's do just them as petals. Maybe we'll just have them as petals. Nice. Dun, dun, dun. And then with some water, you spread the color around. Okay, that looks nice. Again, the middle and the stamen, I'm going to do just like this ones. I'm going to do them with gold and so on, okay? But vlogging on the day would be nice. Okay, yes, I really want to vlog on the day. So I need to probably get my cameras and my phone and everything charged and ready to go <laughs> it's gonna be fine it's going to be fine um i have some eucalyptus leaves here and here and this one was also supposed to be an eucalyptus leaf but this is different so these two are some of the eucalyptus leaves so i'm just going to do um some um some of these colors so i have this viridian okay so i'm gonna use the viridian it's kind of a cobalt kind of color don't know if you know what the cobalt kind of color is but let's get it's kind of a bluish kind of color and i'm going to mix it up with some blue um, and uh, then we're gonna do more purplish leaves later on so the viridian is there and then i'm gonna use this ocean blue to just mix eucalyptus leaves are a very funny shade of blue green that i keep trying to replicate but for some reason it eludes me so i'm trying different combinations just to see what works what doesn't and if it's worth it so you know we're just gonna do that Is my picture still in frame? Yeah, I'm assuming that it is still in frame. <laughs> I I keep moving the picture up, 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 and then also not have a frame picture. I will add some more darker colors. Don't worry, it'll be more darker than this. But this is the first try that we're doing. Okay. Tum, tum, tum. So, uh, that was about it about my vacation that's upcoming. So, what will happen probably is I'll miss a stream, uh, which is going to be the Sunday stream. I'll miss that. Um, and then we do the probably the normal stream later on. It'll be fine. There's no no need to worry. 
I'm going to do the yellow on these ones. Uh, so next Sunday, no more stream. The last stream for now is going to be Wednesday. And then we're going to meet again in another Wednesday. Um, that should be perfectly fine. Um, and then uh, we're just going to post maybe the vlog afterwards. So you guys can see what we've done. Maybe for the vlog I'll, I'll decide to um, look up a little bit some of the information about the Efteling. More like um, when somebody says information, more like the history a little bit and so on. So I can vlog about that. But there are some things that I really want to come and, and show to all of you. Because they're really nice and inspirational. Uh, one of them is there's this tale uh, with the Chinese emperor and the nightingale. It's a really nice tale. But the funniest part is the smell. Again, I think it smells exactly like this one that we smell right now. The linden trees. Uh, because that's what the smell is inside. It's more of a combination of... Um, so it's kind of a raid. You sit back and you listen to a tale and there's all these gimmicks happening, uh, which which are nice. But um, yeah, it's, it's going to be cool, I would say. <sighs> We're going to have some green gold randomly and then some undersea green. And uh, it should be fine. And what else do I want to see? There's the Cinderella castle. There's a lot more castles. Rapunzel's castle. So they have this thing which is the forest. And then in the middle. They have a place where they do pancakes so it's the pancake house but in the back they have a place where you can sit on benches and so on and um it's like this old restaurant kind of thing that they closed down uh, but it's kind of surrounded by hydrangeas so that's where i want to go like to the place with the hydrangeas just so i get really good good coverage the other place that i really like is the um the fairies ride and the Fata Morgana and the last one that I wanna be maybe I'll go twice. Okay, maybe I'll go twice. <laughs> uh it's a symbolica and the symbolica is kind of a castle where you go, it's like a castle of fantasy. Really nice, uh, a really nice ride. And um yeah, I really want to see it. I really want to make lots of pictures and, you know, make some drawings. Um, when I come back home, I want to make some some stories out of it and some, you know, ideas. It's going to be fun. So, yeah, I'm preparing you guys for a very fun vlog. Uh, in Rotterdam, I don't know exactly what we're going to visit. Maybe we're going to visit some ships and some other parts. It's going to be fun. Um, uh, we're going to rent a bike and we're just going to go browse around, man. Browse around. Um, in, the port is, in the port is really nice in uh, Rotterdam. It's a really nice port and... Um, they have lots of ships and maybe we see even cruise ships although nowadays I doubt it because mm, there's no more cruise ships going about so I'm not sure if we're gonna see cruise ships anymore but you never know you can never know what will happen what's our luck maybe our luck is changing you know I really like how this flower is so super granulating. 
y solo eso. Ok, that's going good. Guadalupe. Oh, hi, Guadalupe. Sorry, I didn't see you there. I have a friend living in Rotterdam and he's always posted beautiful pictures. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Sting. <laughs> Posting. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'm... Uh, uh, I also want to post some nice pictures. And I saw... They have these nice tiny parks also full of flowers and... Uh, oh, it's okay. No problem. <laughs> we can still understand you. <laughs> no, there's no no hard feelings here. Um, yeah, I'm. It's funny. I, I'm. I don't want to move. I don't want to go on holiday outside of Holland because um, I'm a bit too scared yet of the virus. But yeah, I'm just hoping that. Um, You know, it's going to be nice. And uh, what I heard, it's going to be nice weather as well, uh, which is good. Because I this week was not nice weather. This week um, we got rain and more rain and really dreary weather. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, I'm wearing in the middle of summer long sleeves, okay? And I went outside and in my jacket, so <laughs> this kind of weather had and I know that some other countries around the world uh, they get really heat waves and in the Netherlands we get cold spells but um, I heard that next week it's gonna be around 23 degrees um, which is frankly really nice because 23 degrees uh, it's good weather for the Netherlands okay it's actually quite hot I would say I uh, haven't seen it that hot in a while so um, I'm using again Viridian for these leaves because I decided that these are also eucalyptus leaves. Why not? Um, so yeah, oh, yeah, one thing I wanted to go uh, in Rotterdam, they have this what's called an amphibian, amphibian bus. So there's a bus, you go on the road with the bus, yay, and then uh, it goes into the water and it transforms into a boat and uh, I really want to go with that, <laughs> so I'm going to have fun with the amphibian bus, I'm hoping that they let us because I'm not sure if you can distance yourself inside the bus, but I'm just hoping that it'll be fine and they won't make that big of a bus, I mean, we're gonna have our masks on and stuff, so I always wanted to have fun with the bus, with the amphibian bus. Um, yeah, they will, it will be fun. Last time we went to Rotterdam, we actually went bouldering, which I know is weird. Uh, why would you go to Rotterdam to do bouldering? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> To be honest, I think we didn't realize that in my own city we had bouldering gyms here. And then we just googled and then the first bouldering... And by the way, Rotterdam is about two hours away from where I live. So it's quite far away, right? It's not it's not close by or anything. But for some reason we thought that that's the only way we can go bouldering. And, and then we decided to go to Rotterdam for uh, like two days. Uh, now we know better, but... I still like Rotterdam, so, yeah. Um, let me see if I can add some, some more reds. I want to add some reds together on these leaves. Don't know why. I feel like I need to add red just to make it more interesting, I guess. Uh, I'm just adding the red first and then... I'll blend it out. It's okay. Okay. Guadalupe, have you ever been to the Netherlands before? Or maybe I'm mistaken and maybe you actually live here. And I didn't know about it. Could be. Uh, 
because maybe when we when this is all over maybe I wanna create some meetups with all my fans and see if we can meet somewhere I'm I'll, I always dreamed that I will meet with some of the people that watch me and we're gonna go somewhere and paint something like we're gonna go to a park or somewhere funny um, and we're just gonna paint and have some fun <coughs> don't know why I had always this dream it's funny um, in the past, we used to go to this, with this lady here in Amsterdam. She used to do these, uh, classes, watercolor classes, and we used to go, we used to go, for example, um, buy a cafe. I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but my advice, advisor did his postdoctoral fellowship in the Netherlands. Oh, okay, that's cool. That's cool. Is it super hot now? In, in Pennsylvania because I, I am reading about this heat wave in the United States so I'm just hoping that uh, you're not too hot where you are and I'm hoping that you can so I met some people from Rotterdam and my friend is doing a postdoctoral fellowship there oh, okay that's nice nice Rotterdam is really nice <laughs> I uh, yeah um, it's a very big city though. <laughs> it's very hard to actually, I don't know. I wanted to move there actually. In last time I went there, I decided that I wanted to move there. But unfortunately you have to move there if you actually have a job there. <laughs> I mean, it's a very expensive city. Right. Oh yes, it's hot and humid outside. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. I'm hoping that you have an air code there or something. And here I am complaining that it's too cold. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's like 90. Okay, 90 Fahrenheit. Okay, that's still above 30 degrees Celsius, I'm assuming. Can you... Yeah, Fahrenheit, yeah. That's... Uh, that... that tends to be quite I think it gets even worse if it's humid because then you can't you feel like you can't breathe in and so on so that's why um, the red I'm using by the way if you're wondering what red I'm using it's alizarin crimson from Daniel Smith okay so don't uh, don't worry this is the red and even this red that I put in the leaf is still alizarin crimson I'm trying to tie in the colors together so you know that they're more a little bit more cohesive so that's what I'm doing here yeah so how was I saying 32 degrees okay 32 degrees is really a lot <laughs> yeah uh we we need to convert to Celsius here, but I can I can imagine it's really hot. Uh, I hope you are safe and uh, and sound sound inside. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, Rotterdam is very expensive. <laughs> like the city where I live, basically I pay half the money for a house. Then I like even less than half the money for a house than what you would pay in Rotterdam. So <laughs> this is kind of the the story of my life. Although it's only two hours away, still it's very expensive. <laughs> so uh, if you get the job there, you also get the salary to kind of afford to live there. But yeah. I don't have a job there so <laughs> I was like oh we want to move there and then we looked at the houses and then we saw the prices and it was like no we're not going to move there <laughs> it's, it's too expensive to be honest I'm just thinking what uh, Okay, I think I want to do this one May Green from uh, Schminke and Permanent Green so it's going to be kind of a neon green it's going to it's going to create a sort of like uh, weird, um, weird, weird contrast, right? Yeah, anyway, so, yeah, if I'm thinking about it, the house that we have here, like, if I compare Rotterdam, it's gonna be kind of the same like Amsterdam, which I don't live in Amsterdam, uh, either, <laughs> so I read also, uh, further away from Amsterdam, but, um, like, Amsterdam houses, 
I think it's three times as more expensive than the city where I live. And my city is not that big, so, you know, probably there's a reason why. Luckily, the trains are very good and I can go to Amsterdam in like half an hour or so. Um, it's not that bad. But, yeah, like people living there. I know I have some colleagues that are renting in Amsterdam. And I wouldn't, I would not pay more than half my salary to, I mean, no, I, I believe in, yes, it's a nice city, yes, it's full of, you know, bars and restaurants and all sorts of stuff, but to pay those enormous amount for rent, I, no, <laughs> I cannot in good conscience do that. <laughs> So I uh, live on the outskirts, which is nice because that means that I get to have a lot of nature. So my city is surrounded by forests and by the sea, uh, on one sea on one side and, you know, lots of lakes. So I get a lot of, um, oh yeah, that was funny. I get a lot of uh, what I want to say, um, nature. And when we went... Um, a few days ago, we went for, for a walk into the nearby forest. We have a tiny forest. I actually made a video. Hmm, maybe I should post that video on Instagram or something. Uh, with the forest. It was full of bugs and spiders and so on. I hate spiders. In the video, you can hear me breathe really heavily because we were going underneath some branches that were wrapped in spider webs. And I kind of panicked little bit so you can hear my breathing go like <gasps> so yeah I hate spiders which is weird because I, I love nature but uh, yeah spiders don't agree with me very much so yeah it's very funny uh, what was I saying yeah we have lots of nature and we got bitten by so many bugs uh, both me and my husband don't know this these mosquitoes are biting through the clothing, I think, or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. But uh, we got bitten so much by everything, all the critters. Uh, but it was still fun. I like to do my uh, evening, basically, walks in the small forest outside. Um... We sometimes see foxes in the forest outside, um, especially if you go early in the morning. We see foxes and we see uh, bunnies. And I, we believe that the bunnies are actually um, the food for the foxes. Um, it's, it's surprising that the foxes that I see here, they're not at all like the picture-perfect foxes that you normally see in all of this zoo material and so on, where they have like this beautiful fur and so on no the foxes here are really raggy and <laughs> they look like uh, they've been on rough times right their fur is like super matted and dirty and and all of that stuff it's very funny how you get an image of a fox in your mind and then you see it in reality and you go like is that really a fox anyway so yes we are living um actually my town is um so we go sometimes with the bike. Our time is next to a natural reserve, uh, one of the biggest natural reserves in the Netherlands. Um, it's quite enclosed. Only a few parts are open, but they let animals be free inside the reserve. And, um, you know, um, they also have wolves there and, and horses. They have wild horses and so on. You can sometimes see it because there's a train that goes right in the middle of it. That Basically, that's one of the few uh, ways to see what's inside the reserve by going with the train there um, and then we see we saw wild horses and um, buffalo and all these kind of animals that are gathered there lots of deer um, and wild boars stuff like that so there's not the question as to why do we have foxes here because we are living right next to a natural reserve uh, where wolves has been spotted and uh, you know all that stuff so um, it's quite natural that you see this okay uh, let me see 
the funny part is the foxes do get scared of you. Um, when we go in the morning, we usually go running in the morning in the, in the forest here. And you see them from far away. And when they see you, um, they start running away. They get scared. I mean, they don't attack or anything. They're quite friendly. The bunnies, the bunnies don't care. They would, they would go like, I mean, I'm fast enough as a bunny, so I really don't care. <laughs> so they don't, they, don't, uh, they don't get bothered. They might go onto the other side of the road when you put. By the way, I'm looking for a very tiny brush because I want to add the details, but with the gold. But I'm not sure which size of brush I use. So I'm just looking for a tiny brush. Okay, I think I'm going to take a number one. So I have a number one. Uh... It's a Kolinsky one, so just a very tiny brush, because um, I'm going to use the gold, and this is going to be... Hi, you see here, kind of all my palettes open, <laughs> so I need a pipette. How do I reactivate these things? And I think I'm going to use this gold, this, if I'm not mistaken, this is the Egyptian gold. Um, I have a pipette with some water and I just put a few dro drops here and I'm just gonna put a few drops on this one and that's it. I don't need I don't need more than that. Just need to let it sit, sit a bit. In the meantime I'm gonna fix this one because this one I said I want it to white in. So I'm gonna take the white gel pen while this, this one activates. And then we're gonna go to the other one because I'm planning to do the moon also tonight. I need I need a little bit more stuff for Instagram to be honest so I need to do a lot more okay so I'm going to fix this one because this one was the white one okay I'm gonna fix the the ones that I went over the lines because this is a uniball signal pen oh by the way I need to buy some more Yep. Now it looks really nice. You see? Indeed. Indeed the white looks nice against this one. I'm not so sure about the white here. But what I will do is I am I am lining I'm putting some white along the petals here just to make them not blend into each other, okay? So this is what I'm doing. Okay, maybe here as well. I'm doing a dot or two or three. A dot or two or three. Just tiny dots. I don't want to go overboard. Okay. So that's the one that needed it. And then we're going to do... Now it should have been activated already. Okay. So. Oh yeah, it's activated. So you don't need to leave it long, you see. This, these are the fine tech colors. Um, really nice pigment and Mika pigment. And I'm just using a really tiny brush. Literally, this is the number one. Right. By the way, you have two different ways two ways of brushes if you don't believe me uh, not all one number ones are the same because there's number ones that are long like this one so they hold a bit more water but they have a few bristles and then they're number ones that are very short so I would say that if you want to have lines, like what I want to have here, you should use a number one that has a long stem. So you can you can come around and do these kind of stems. Uh, but if you want to add just normal lines or some really tiny details, then you use the number one that is not having long stems. The one with the long stems is harder to uh, control. Just saying. Okay. 
and I'm gonna use these ones. I'm gonna do the stems also on these ones. I'm not sure if this the, are they called stems or pistils because this is something that I never know. Um, yeah, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I've been I've been to the U.S. only once, and that was when I went for my job there. Um, I went to San Jose for a week. And to be honest, San Jose is not, uh, I don't think it's representative of what America is. I, I only stayed there for a week and it was basically working. Um, so and then I went back um, and I've only been to San Francisco basically for a day. I saw the Golden Gate Bridge and... Uh, and it was in fog, so I didn't really see much. <laughs> it was quite windy and, and foggy. Um, not the typical, not the typical thing that you see. Um, so I've been there. I've been to the pier, sixty nine or what is it called? So I visited a little bit, but basically San Jose, it's almost nothing. Um, been to the mall. The funny part is when I went there, um, my colleagues uh, from Amsterdam, they were like, if you go there, you need to go to the mall and you need to buy us uh, things. So I got a shopping list basically from my friends. They're like, you're staying there a week? Yeah, okay, then that means you need a place in your luggage for us to get stuff. Uh, so... Yeah, I was forced to buy things like uh, one of my best friends. She wanted this Levi jeans. California, it's totally different. Okay, yes, in California. Uh, <laughs> it was... Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure how to describe it. <laughs> not my cup of tea. <laughs> um, it, I'm not going to say it wasn't nice, but... Um, I didn't really feel any warmth out of anybody there. I don't know. Maybe because everybody was there for for their job. And that's the only reason why they stay there. So I didn't really feel like the culture stuff. Like if you come to the Netherlands or, you know, there's a culture. There's a, you know, there's a community feeling. And being there, I didn't really feel that community, right? I mean, it was a nice city, kind of. Uh, but that was kind of it. <laughs> so um, I I did say that next time I'll I'll go and I'll visit different different cities in the US when I'll have the chance. I actually wanted to go because I I got a visa. Basically, I got a ten year visa so I can visit the US because of my job, <sighs> um, and I can visit as a as a tourist. So I actually wanted to go as a tourist, but then COVID hit. So. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm not going to come anymore, not now. Um, because I wanted to do a tour, you know, I wanted to visit all these national parks that you guys have there. And not only national parks, but certain cities just to absorb the culture and to see how different is it from Holland, how different is it from where I am. Um, but yeah, I didn't, didn't get the chance, but I wasn't very impressed by, sorry, California. Um, don't know why. It was very, everything was very commercial. Everything was either in a mall or just sky, skyscrapers and malls. That's, that's all I saw. <laughs> Basically, nothing more. Uh, which is not my cup of tea, right? I want to experience the small towns or things like that. Um, I have family in, in Austin, Texas. Um, that they live there. Um, it's, it's very funny, I'm not gonna tell the story, but, um, there's, uh, you know, like a hundred years ago, some Dutch people, namely from the family, immigrated there more than a hundred years ago, like in the 1800s, 18 something, something, they immigrated there and they, uh, you know, they founded families and, um, uncle Donald, we call him. Uh, he um, he came back to search for his Dutch family um, 
like some 30 years ago. And ever since, you know, our families, they visit each other and they come to here and we sometimes go to there. It's quite nice. They live in Texas. So I always wanted to visit them, uh, like um, mom and um, more older members of the family already went there, but I never been there. So um, I'm quite young, I guess. <laughs> so I wanted to visit and see, um, you know, how they live, what fun stuff do they do, stuff like that. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'll have some, I'll have some fun. You know? Okay. Uh, I'm going to do some more darker now. Some more darker things. Some more darker thoughts. And then we're going to go to the other one. Okay. Yeah, and when I, when I went, it's so funny. Because it was my first time going to the US. And I didn't know how do I get to San Jose, right? It's not like there's a direct flight from Amsterdam to California to San Jose. And nobody actually told me. It's so funny that a lot of my colleagues actually knew there, knew that you go, you fly direct to San Francisco and then you take an Uber to San Jose. And I was like, how do I get to San Jose? And the only way I could find on my own was like, I fly to Maryland, <laughs> which is so weird. I had to stay there. <laughs> I had to stay in the airport for like eight hours until my flight. And from Maryland, you could take a domestic flight to San Jose. So, you know, I fly like uh, 10 hours, 11 hours to Maryland and then stay there another eight hours and then fly for another two or three hours back. And people were laughing at me because they're like, why didn't you take direct to San Francisco? Because that would have been only, uh, you know, 10 hours flight and then you could have gotten an Uber and in one hour you would have been there. I was like, you should have told me that before I booked everything and before I I planned my trip because uh, that was the longest. Basically, I was awake for 24 hours because I couldn't sleep in the, in the plane. I, I was uh, pretty scared. One funny thing about the transatlantic planes that I found was nowadays you have uh, Wi-Fi in the train. So... You know, I was on a runway, I was texting my husband, I was telling him, hey, uh, I'm on the runway, we're going to fly. And then we started flying and then I figured out that there's Wi-Fi in the plane. And then the entire plane I could actually converse with him and I could actually browse the internet, watch Netflix and, and so on. <laughs> yes, that was a long trip, right? <laughs> I was like, I was so tired when I got there. And the funny part is it didn't hit me so I got used to not sleeping and then I was trying to sleep when I got there um and I just couldn't in um the next day because I arrived basically on a Friday evening and my job thingy was starting from Monday so it was from Monday to Friday it was a course and then I had to fly back the next day so then I, what I thought is I'm gonna ride Friday and then I'm going to go visit San Francisco and you know I do my touristy thing and then <laughs> you know so I basically went the next day I was dead tired I went to San Francisco maybe that's why I wasn't so impressed in it uh, you know, I did the touristy thing. I got the bus uh, with the, you know, go on the bridge, all the all the cool stuff. And then um, I thought that the, um, how do you call it? Um, the jet lag is going to hit. By the way, I finished this one. I think I'm done. Unless somebody tells me that they don't think I'm done. I don't know if you can see actually the nice... Um, the nice thingy. Okay. No. Um, I'm done with this one. We're going to do the moon. Because I really wanted to get to the moon. And then um, I'm switching. Doing the switcheroo. <laughs> let's, uh, let's have some fun. Oh yeah. I'm going to have some fun about the airports that I've been into. So I arrived in Maryland. Um, and then... Uh, I'm going to put it more like this. This is, these are the buds and this is the moon I'm going to do with nice yellow and this is the sky I'm going to do and so on. So anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, the jet lag, it didn't hit me 
uh, I was fine up until Wednesday. So I went to San Francisco, went back, tried to be as normal as possible. On a, on the Sunday, I went to all the malls. There were like three malls in San Jose. I went to all of them, bought all the stuff that I needed. Um, got a little bit, bit freaked out because everything I was eating had calories written on them. And, uh, you know, then I was like, I can't eat any of that because even an omelet like had a thousand calories and I was like, oh no, I can't, I can't do that. Anyway, I went to work, uh, and it was a course, right? With many people we were doing this course and I was fine for two days, but then on Wednesday, the jet lag hit and literally I fell asleep during the course <laughs> in front of everybody. I was snoring. Like my body just gave up around three o'clock in the afternoon and I just fell asleep. And they sent me to the hotel because I was just dead in the water, basically. So it took a while for the jet, jet lag to settle in. I have no idea why. It could be because my initial trip was so long, like 24 hours. I could be. <laughs> I'm still to this to this day baffled because everybody else that arrives with me they had a jet lag in the first day or first and second day um and then they were fine and for me it just hit me way later than anything so uh, I, i'm just not going to uh, i don't know okay i'm gonna use nickel azo yellow i'm gonna do the moon first for the moon and this is a tiny one right i'm i'm not doing the bigger the big moons okay <laughs> so what other stuff that uh that was funny on the trip oh yeah we uh i was super scared on the trip because man that plane is so big um i don't know never never been in a in a jumbo jet oh yeah that was funny i mean it's not like my my company paid for like business class on anything i had the economy class and while boarding for that plane you know they start they start calling people like <sighs> sky lounge xxx and all these names and everybody was boarding first and everybody's like now elite members xyz and now i was on the last guys to board literally the last guys to board i i was waiting i was like how many kind of elite memberships are there in this plane you know like delta elite blah 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 it was a delta plane yeah <laughs> uh, delta elite and sky lounge blah 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 and <laughs> business class and even families with children <laughs> and everybody else was boarding the plane <laughs> except me i was like i hope they don't forget about me in here because I'm also here, I need to get... But anyway, it was fun. Uh, my first time ever on a very big plane. Uh, yeah, I would... Uh, I don't know if I would ever... Uh, take that long of a plane. Uh, like, like that. Um, what surprised me is also... Um, Another another thing is I couldn't find my connection on the boards, and this is something that surprised me. Like in here in in Europe, the when you are at the airport and um, they shout, I mean you see the um, the plane trips. You go to the boards to see when your plane is coming. Um, you see all the planes that day because they have these huge boards and they are ordered on the order of the time when they leave. So it doesn't matter which city they go to, where they go to. It's like, okay, one o'clock, like all the planes that will go at one o'clock. And this is how you find your plane and, and so on. But what, what threw me off there and I was looking like crazy because, you know, I had to wait eight, eight hours. Oh, I need to leave. It's always wonderful to drag, uh, draw along with you. See you. Okay. Bye. Have fun. I uh, hope to see you next time <laughs> and uh, take care, yeah, uh, because, um, yeah, you cannot uh, play around with the heat. It's it's very dangerous, so I hope you're safe and I hope to see you next time. Have fun. Okay, 
So what was I saying? Crazy stuff. Um, yeah, the the planes the planes in there were um, based on the city where they go to. So you have to look for the city where they go to, and then you can see the plane. But it's so totally different order, and that really freaked me out because I thought, oh shit, where am I? Why is the plane shown? Uh, just a little bit of a nerve wracking. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of a different color also, like this. By the way, for the rest um, that you guys are here, uh, we're doing the last piece for tonight, which is this moon. And I just drew this just before the stream. I don't know why I was, I was like, I miss drawing moons. Don't know why. And I did a tiny one. I didn't want to do a big one. I didn't want it to take forever or anything. And I was just trying to draw some uh, flowers that are like more like buds. Like they're not yet fully, fully developed. So that's why. Dun, dun, dun. That's a nice one. I'm going to do some of the leaves maybe first. And then here. Here is where I'm thinking I need a little bit of... Um, I need some pinks. Mm -hmm. Let me see what pinks I have. I have here a galaxy pink. And I have the potter's pink. And I have some visteria. Which uh, is it pink? It's not really pink. Okay. I need to bring in the heavy guns. Okay. Oh, which is my other set. My whole buying set has pinks, okay? So that's why I'm bringing pinks. So. And this is the pink I'm looking for. This one. You see it? This pink is called shell pink. And you see how many pinks I have here, like bright rose, opera, brilliant pink. So lots more pinks. So I'm going to use those ones. I'm going to keep it next to me. I even have gouache from Holbein. I officially have all my sets here. Maybe I should do a picture afterwards of all my sets. Okay. The shell pink. I'm going to start with some shell pink. And I'm going to, by the way, shell pink is really a nice color, but you have to be careful because it's quite opaque, because the only way to make pink is to actually add white to it. Uh, like you could dilute some red, but diluting red is not really going to make this pink. It's going to be very hard to make pink. So, but I'm going to add red nonetheless to the bottom here, just to change a little bit the color. Yes. I'm added just a little bit of red, just to give it some shading. Okay. Makes it, if you add a little bit of red to this shell pink, it makes it more like, like a dusty pink. So that's nice. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to come in also with Potter's Pink later on and so on. I'm gonna make it really nice, no worry. But I just wanted to have some powdery pink before all the other pinks. Am I correct to say powder pink? Yes, powder. Yep. Dum, dum, dum. Okay. I know you're wondering how is how is this pink going to hold up against the others, but it's gonna be nice because it's gonna be so delicate. It's gonna be really delicate. 
really delicate against the yellow and the stuff. The yellow is going to be the start of the show and with this with the really dark um, blue here. And then the pink is just going to be very delicate here. I'm going to add uh, of course shadows and all of that, but yeah. And maybe I'll just do the galaxy pink already. I don't think I need to add the red because it seems to me that it does the same as the galaxy pink would. If I add the red, it transforms into the dusty pink as well. So, whatever. Oh. The acacia, the, the linden trees, they're really smelling nice. I have the window open and it's so nice to smell and I don't know, kind of transports you into a different different state. I might actually want to go a little bit more and have a maybe a small walk. Just considering it right now. I'm considering what I'm doing after this after this and it's going to be almost nine o'clock, but I'm thinking I can still do a walk outside. Just a small one. Okay, so, you know, this is going to be pink, this is going to be pink, this is uh, going to be a little bit more uh, brighter pink towards reddish, right? And, you know, then the leaves are going to be super nice and green, and then you're going to have the blue here, so that's, that's the idea. So let's see. You know, peonies are pretty much very nice pink all, all the time, so that's why I want it. I, I draw peonies also with reds and stuff a lot of times because I love reds, but, you know, technically they're quite delicate flowers if you need, need them, so quite nice and delicate. So now we live up to the expectations of what the, what the stream was supposed to be about, the peonies. Okay. Maybe I should have named them Peonies Buds. I'm gonna leave a lot of white. I'm not doing, because this is such a delicate color, I don't need to fill in every little crevice of it. So now we're gonna go with the galaxy pink. Here, here, here. And now I'm coming with water and making sure that we blend this galaxy paint pink in. You don't want to have these harsh edges or anything. And we're going to blend it in. It was still wet, so that's why I had the edges like that. You know? What other stuff did I like about going there? Um, traveling to there. I always wanted to go to the Cheesecake Factory because, you know, everybody knows here friends and everybody knows about the Cheesecake Factory episode where they get a Cheesecake Factory cake and they eat it and so on. So, you know, it's part of the Urban, urban culture here so I, I want to go there and I actually managed to be there um, which is really nice uh, and I'm going to do some more brighter pink and some reds let's see tum 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 I'm doing all of these ones away and I'm putting my whole bind set here <laughs> okay I'm going to start with this one. Well, this one is called Brilliant Pink, and I'm gonna bring in some opera and some different ones, but yeah. This is more pinkish pink. Pinkish pink? Is there such a thing as pinkish pink? I don't know. I'm just gonna assume that it is. Okay. 
is more towards the red, so or towards purple, maybe. Uh, so I ate the um, a cake at the Cheesecake Factory there in San Francisco. It was really nice. So um, I got my uh, my friend's uh, friend's sitcom, uh, you know, dream from when I was young and I was watching Friends. <laughs> I got I got to eat a cake at the Cheesecake Factory. Um, surprisingly. It tasted exactly like any other cheesecake that, that I had before. So, um, from a cheesecake cheesecake perspective, uh, it wasn't anything that I haven't done or seen before. But the experience was nice. So, you know, I'm still quite quite nice, grateful that I was there. Um, Dun, dun, dun. I've been to the Michaels. I mean, we don't have Michaels this year. So one of the shops that I've been in the mall there was Michaels. And I actually got some really nice papers from there. I got the Stratmore papers because I can't get that in here in, in Holland. It's very hard to get Stratmore watercolor paper. And I also got some cheaper watercolor sets like the Prang and um, some different ones, uh, which is pretty nice, I would say. Mm. Oh, this one. This one, this one, this one. I forgot this. You see, I'm forgetting. I am forgetting petals. You cannot forget petals, Claudia. You have to do them. Okay, and then galaxy pink from here. So, yeah, I was thought that uh, at least I could buy there at Michael's all the supplies that I can't really get here. Or I can, but then it's going to be very complicated because there's going to be all sorts of import tax and whatnot. I don't even know. I never had such a pink pink hues um, before so this is the first time I'm doing this kind of pink purplish dusty pinks uh, uh, kind of try I always stay away from these colors don't know why <laughs> so don't don't blame me um, even if it's a tiny one it still requires um it still requires quite some layers so I wouldn't I wouldn't say even for a tiny piece like this that you wouldn't spend time doing it you still spend time it's a bit lesser time than a big piece but mm, it's still a big time so yeah okay now I'm really doing it and this one needs to be more darker because it's really here this one also needs to be a bit more darker here okay someday Okay. Tom, tom, tom. So, what parts do I want to visit? Oh, yeah, my my dad been a lot more times to the U.S. than me, and uncles. So, we'll see. I always wanted to visit New York. The funny part is, I think if you look at the pictures. Rotterdam really does look like New York a lot, like really a lot. I'm going to be very bold and do the middle very dark. Um, because Rotterdam is also newly built, but also has all the sky raises and, and so on. 
so yeah um pretty interesting oh i'm going to sneeze because of the smell outside i apologize in advice if i sneeze too much this one is called Kunakrodom magenta so i'm just going to add this Kunakrodom magenta here here and there and especially in between here and what else? Here. Dun dun dun. Ideally, you get to visit a lot of the world eh, while we're here. I would love to visit more parts of the world. I would love to visit Japan as well because I want to go to the Harry Potter uh, amusement park there. Yes, I know. I'm a Harry Potter fan. What What are you going to do about it? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I really want to visit there, the Universal Studios. Um, I know that there's one in the US as well. So, you know, one of the, one of the two would be nice if I could get there. Um... It's either Japan or the US, right? So I would definitely going to come more just for visits. If you're asking me, will I move there? Uh, no. I think um, my entire family is here. I, I mean, I only have very distant family there in Austin, Texas, but I don't think that will make me move there, <laughs> right? So, yeah. That's about it. Um, if you're wondering, but I, I'm not against visiting stuff. We were actually thinking what would be the first city we're going to visit after, you know, more restrictions are lifted. And I think we want to go to Edinburgh in England um, because that looks a little bit more like Harry Potter than any other. Harry Potter things if we want to visit it so it's going to be fun okay I did uh, quite a lot on the flowers I'm going to do the leaves and then we're going to finish up with this one uh, it's going to be fun I'm not even going to switch I'm going to look like okay what type of lips do I want I want this olive green so I'm going to use the green yellow the green yellow from this set here and then I'm gonna use the olive green as the darker shade mm. you know whole bind set is also pretty good um, it's very it's artist grade don't get me wrong costs quite a bit and it's quite nice so I use them interchangeably. I don't have to use my Daniel Smiths or my stuff, right? Sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm going to use my whole bind set. The only difference is my whole bind set is pretty much, I'm going to call them cheerful colors. <laughs> uh, and my Daniel Smith is more darker muted colors, okay? So it's just a bit of a difference in color range, not in uh, how good the sets are. Or how good the paint is. Because it's the same. It's artist grade. And um, yeah, there's not many differences between all the three major brands. Schwinke, Holbein, Daniel Smith. So if you ask me uh, from, from my point of view in terms of quality, they're all the same. And I kind of use them interchangeably. You know? So, yeah. Okay. I see a lot of a lot of people starting out with actually whole bind sets and that's fine. If you can get your hands, I could only order it from Japan. At a reasonable price. I ordered it from Japan directly for 60 euros. 
while if I would order it from the UK or something, it would have gone at 300 euros, which I can understand people want to do like profit, but mm, the difference between 60 euros and 300 euros is very big, so I was a bit surprised, to be honest, um, about that difference, but I'm glad that I was able to order them directly from Japan, so then I don't have to worry about, you know, this kind of consequences but they're they're very good sets I have no complaints whatsoever and even the gouache from Holbein really art is great gouache no complaints whatsoever uh, it goes so smoothly on the paper it's so nice I uh, I used it to do some some of the paintings so I'm going to use it a little bit more I don't worry that I messed up the middle here because I'm going to do it blue there, so it doesn't matter. Okay, now I'm going to need some... I'm going to do sap green with shadow green and that should give me quite some darker shade on these ones. So sap green is a different shade, it's really nice, it brings out the colors in there. Tum tum tum. Maybe I should have added some reds in the leaves. Yeah, maybe I will add that already. Uh, if you're wondering, I'm just gonna treat these leaves as normal. Gonna do them with sap green. I'm not gonna bother with the third color scheme because uh, it's a bit too too long, too much. Okay, so only two leaves left, and then we're gonna do we're gonna deepen a bit the moon. We're gonna do some craters, and then we're gonna do the sky, and then we add some stars, and it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna be perfectly fine. Remember, I'm gonna darken these leaves with some shadow green. It's gonna be the dark shade. So, that's gonna be quite nice, quite cool. Okay, shadow green. Shadow green from Holbein. You see what darker shade it is? It looks like the perling green. It is almost the same shade as perling green from Daniel Smith. That's why I'm saying that these colors can be also interchangeable or these brands can be interchangeable because although they have different names um, you can definitely see where the colors and the pigments are almost the same so I don't mind either way okay now, let's deepen a bit uh, the moon. I'm going to take away the pinks and the stuff. I'm going to put it more aside. I'm going to pretend it's not there. And we're going to get our tiny one here. And we are going to go with the hue. This is a golden hue golden red hue basically and I'm trying to deepen the shadows on the moon and make a smooth gradient towards the nice okay okay now What blue do I want? Do I want this blue or do I want a different blue? I know what blue I'm going to use. And I'm going to bring yet another set into the the whole fray. Don't worry. All is well. These are my Japanese colors. And I'm going to use this blue. 
the bluish black and the purplish black I'm gonna use okay this is um it's gonna be really dark dark blue and um Okay, play next. Bluish black. So the trick with these ones, because they're very creamy, is to, you know, have water in them. Get them. Start putting color and then you go back with water. And when you add water, it creates this very fancy color. These blooms. Because it's such a creamy thing. And now I'm going to add even more water so you can see how these things are happening here. And I'm going to add purple because this is. Um, it's not going to be only blue, right? So I'm going to go around the flower very carefully. And you might not see it on the screen. That's fine. Because I need to angle my hand so that I can actually go around. By the way, I'm adding even more water just to make it a bit more interesting to create this kind of blooms and I might actually drop some water and you it will pull pull the color away and that's okay and I need to come with some more color because um it dried out pretty fast and I don't want to have weird hard edges. And this is the purple. I'm going to mix the purples with the blues. I'm going to bring blues back here. I'm gonna have blue on the side. Okay. I really need to work faster a bit. Because it dries out really fast. Okay. I the sky shouldn't be only one color or only one. This guy should be a bit more funky. Okay, if I had time, I would have done even different things, but yeah. I'm gonna use this yellow black now that I'm here to add a little bit of interest here, here and there. You wonder what am I doing here? I'm just adding some of this yellow black. And I'm making it look like there's a crater here. And I'm going to add also some details with a black pen. But basically, yeah. There's the craters from the moon that needs to be created. Right? Okay. And those are nice. This one I need to let dry to add the stars, right? Uh, but doesn't mean I can't add some darker colors here. Let's see what colors would I pick. OK, 
okay. And oh, pick, pick still this colors, and I will add some dots here and there. Okay, let's add here some dots. I will go with the, with the black pen and I'll add stippling here and there because it's really important. And I'm adding some dots here. I really like the contrast. I, I never thought of using pink because it's not my color. But in a way, um, it looks okay. I think it, it looks pretty nice. So... <gasps> you know what I did? I didn't clean my brush very good and I went into green, but I had purple. So my, uh, my green now has purple in it. It's very funny. I just wanted some darker green so I can add some dots on the green. Okay, so now, black pen, it's a micron pen, it's a 05, let me check, things have dried pretty much significantly, okay, I'm doing some dots here and there. Also on the flower, just to make it a little bit more pop. Right? Okay. That's about it. And now, it still hasn't dried, so the funny part is I'm not going to wait for it to dry. It's almost 9 o'clock. Yeah? Um, if you want to see how this turned out. Uh, oh, let's try it. Let's see. I'm adding stars, I'm adding bigger stars. And I'm adding some stars here. Yeah, that's really nice. And that's about it for tonight. I know it's been two hours, but it's a fun stream, in my opinion. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope I can see you again next time. Huh? I mainly do live streams and I do a lot of art, but I post it on Instagram. So, um, live streams are here uh, Wednesday and Sunday. So, um, join me also next time if you want to. Yeah. Uh, good night. Have fun. Enjoy. I'm hoping you will have a nice end of the day. Um, I had fun. Oh, thank you, Marlena. Bye. Very nice. Very gorgeous. Bye, Johan and uh, Guadalupe and the rest. Yeah. See you guys next time.